Lucky you, you get to just watch these videos in succession, but it's been about a week since I recorded this last video. And the reason is that we at Income School have been obsessing over some of the functions um, that, are, that I'm going to show you here and making sure everything is dialed for you. So let's take a look at the horse search analysis for that website. And this time we're gonna be filling in the competition column here. Let's take the first one, is horse riding safe? Now, I'm going to show you some examples right away to show you what competition of each of these levels look like. Some of you are gonna be really familiar with these concepts and you're gonna be able to move pretty quickly after seeing just a few examples. Others of you need to make sure you watch this entire video because you need to see a bunch of examples to know exactly how to categorize them. So if you're more experienced, it's okay to check out a little bit early in this video, but stick around for a couple minutes at least. All right, is horse riding safe? Again, I'm going to go into an app where I'm not signed in. Now, I could have already told you before I even Googled this that the first result would be an extremely high authority site because this is a YMYL query. And it is, it's from a .gov website. So the competition level there is extreme, right? But then Google fills it in with some analysis from other bloggers and things like that. Now, I recognize a lot of these brands, especially the Spruce Pets, um, as we go through these websites. These are very authoritative uh, sites, plus the complexity of this one being YMYL. And so I would say the competition for this query is extreme. Now, you'll see on all of these, I provide a little bit of a helpful um, explainer of what each of these are as you go. So we saw .gov site, massive brands, that's extreme. And then the cool thing, right? We entered search volume and competition in. Bam, by the magic of robots, it tells us, should we write the post? And it just tells us right away, the answer is no, don't write this. But it also says that, you know, there is a lot of traffic here. The competition's extreme on this one. Could we instead take a small aspect of that safety and write that article? And so it's, it's providing a little bit of analysis for us. Now here, safety, if my site's new, I'm probably just gonna avoid safety at all costs because it's a YMYL topic. If my site's a little bit more established, maybe I do wanna take something like horse riding safety for kids or horse riding safety for people with disabilities, etc. Maybe I want to do some of those things and take us an aspect of this as an article. But right now, I'm just gonna say no. Now, if I were to write it, it would be a staple post and it would take over four hours to write because this is very competitive. Okay, let's take another one. Isn't that fun? It just does your work for you. What kind of rope is used for a horse halter? We see that the volume is very low on this. The first, the first site is about rope and knots, and so that's pretty authoritative. But the second one is a forum right here. Second result is a forum. And then I look at several other, three, uh, several more of these. Um, they're about ropes for halters, but it's not what kind of rope to use. So the whole article isn't really on point. And so even the top article, it's just different ropes for halters, leads, and reins. And so this one, I'm gonna categorize it as low because it wasn't quite zero, but it's, it's kind of between the two. And we see, should we write this article? Well, yeah, you can, but the priority is gonna be very, very low for this because the search volume's under a thousand. And so we're not sure if we really wanna take this on or not. Next, list of what horses can eat. The number one result is a very well-known website in this space, same as number two. Uh, in fact, really all of these are brands that I recognize as I've started to look around uh, this space. And even when a website like the Spruce Pets is not ranking super well for a query like this, I know that the competition for this term is going to be high, but it's not extreme. And so with a volume of over 10,000, the competition is high. So should you go for it? 
Well, yeah, I mean, it could be a big winner. And here's a critical piece of this whole thing. If your site's very well established, a lot of these priorities need to be adjusted because you say, please, competition, bring it on, right? But for most of us mere mortal websites, the priority is going to be low. We got bigger fish to fry, or at least easier fish to fry before we take that one on. This is the competition for buying a horse checklist, a website that we recognize right away, a large organization number two, and several others that are websites that we recognize. I would consider the competition for, to this to be high. Now we're going to look at a very niche topic. How to make a horse bridle out of paracord. We see there's an, a video exactly on point and most people are going to go there. Then we look at the articles and they're not exactly on point. It's not exactly what we'd asked for. These are paracord projects, how to make a bitless bridle with paracord. Um, oh, that's pretty, cord that's pretty close right on here. And so really, I'm going to consider the competition for this one to be between medium and high here. There's a lot that's not quite on topic, but a lot of people are going to be very satisfied for that, with that video. So really, that's the ultimate question is, are the searchers needs already being met? That's what we're really looking for. For this one, I'm probably gonna say hi unless I feel like making a video because I feel like the video would be the right way to attack this kind of result. Can horse poop make you sick? The question here is what exactly is the searcher looking for? Did they smell a lot of horse poop and they're wondering if that can make you sick? Did they step in it? I hope they didn't eat it. We're just trying to understand what exactly they're looking for. We need to know that first to know if their needs are being met in the search result. So the number one is just facts about horse manure. That's not a, an entire article on what we're looking for. Diseases from horses. Maybe that's, I mean, similar. Maybe it has the information in there. We don't know. Claims that horse manure is toxic are, well, horse manure. That may include aspects of it. We don't know. Then we see CDC and .edu websites, and we realize, uh-oh, this is a YMYL query. And so what's the competition? Well, I mean, we might even say the competition is low to medium because so much of this isn't exactly on point. But it's, will it make you sick? We're talking about a YMYL query probably one I want to avoid. So while the straight competition is low to medium, I might say it would be very competitive for me to rank, and so I'm going to mark this as high as well. Buying a horse at auction. Probably people looking for tips here, because it's not just searching horse auctions near me. They're probably looking for tips at how to do this. We see one article directly on point. It's a pretty small website, a geographically loaded, lo located website. But then we do see several other articles that are on point. But some of them are like facts about horse auctions, not really tips that people are probably looking for. Understanding horse auctions. Really, the competition I might say here is medium because we see some smaller websites sneaking in and some articles that may not quite be what a searcher is looking for in here. Now, I do need to point out that Google likes diversity and vague search queries. Something where Google isn't sure what you're looking for, it may show a few different styles of results on slightly different aspects of the topic so that you can click on what you're looking for. And so it's okay to see some diversity in a search result. But here, I probably think there is an opening for me. I wouldn't say the competition's too high. And so, yeah, I think that meets our goal of search analysis, at least 1,000 searches a month. And the competition's medium. Should I write it? Yes, I should write this. And it's a medium priority to do so. Now, in horses, there's a lot of competition. There are articles on some pretty impressively tiny topics here. Um, it's a generally more difficult er arena to find those real low-hanging fruit articles in. And so in a niche like this, it's especially important that you follow this process to make sure you're working at the right topics. Now keep in mind, we're probably going to go through 100, 120 ideas 
to just pick 30 to 50 to write as your first batch of content. Can horses eat marshmallows? Feels like a pretty niche question to me. And yet there are several articles on point from pretty well-known publications such as rutgers.edu, odd things that horses eat, but that's not quite on point. And we also see a forum here, but there are several articles from large publications. And so unless I have something really unique to add to the conversation, maybe that's one I'm gonna to wanna to avoid because it's low search volume. And so why spend the time doing it? Now that's a question I want you to ask a lot. Do I actually have anything to add to the conversation here? Because if I'm essentially going to say the exact same thing as Saddlebox and Animal Hype and helpful hints, hints for horses, etc., then how is Google going to know whose article is best? If we were all really saying the same thing from, from small blogs, it's just going to go off links to the page, right? And you don't have any if you're a newer site, so why enter that fight? So I entered the competition as medium here. There were some blog posts from other bloggers on point but not a ton. And so it says, should you write it? Yeah, maybe, I guess, but it's a very low priority given that it's not that many searches. Why are horses measured in hands? Now, I've long gone on the record that forums are the lowest form of content on the web. Anytime I see forums in a search result, I'm licking my chops. It looks interesting, looks like one that I want to write about. And so here, where I see Quora popping up, I say, haha, this looks good, right? But I do also want to point out that sometimes a forum result could actually be a very good result. For example, something that really has no definitive answer and Google doesn't want to put one opinion above another. Where did I see it the other day? It was something like, should Christians support abortion or what does the Bible say about abortion? I think was the search query. I was just testing a bunch of different things. And I noticed that there were a bunch of forums popping up for some of those queries. I can't remember exactly what it was. And at first I thought, that's weird. And I thought, you know, actually that makes a lot of sense because Google doesn't want to take sides here. And so instead it's going to throw it to the public square. And a forum is where 50 different people can voice their opinion and you can make up your own mind. And I thought, okay, actually it's not a bad result. And it was a helpful thread that was going on there. So don't discount forums entirely, but generally I want to see articles from websites and not forums. And so here we have Quora. We do have one website two websites that are on point, and then the rest of it isn't quite there. It's not why are horse me horses measured in hands. And so this one, that actually looks pretty good. Ooh, and the volume is five to 10 with medium. Yeah, that's looking good. Five to 10,000 searches a month and only medium uh, competition. Yeah, that's, that's, that one could be a very good article to write on. Again, it's not the low-hanging fruit that we're going to see in a high priority where it's just you're definitely going to win this. But yeah, I'm going to be pretty excited about writing that. So just because it says medium doesn't mean we're not excited about it. It just means it may not be the first one you write because it isn't going to be like a guaranteed result. We're going to leave horses for a second and look at guppies. Remember the rare guppy breeds topic that we rank for right now for, with fish tank setups, right? So we know this gets good search volume and then look at all of the rest. They're all about different types of guppies, but nobody's writing about the weird stuff, the rare stuff. Here's one on Pinterest. Um, if Pinterest is ranking just a single pin on Pinterest, uh, hmm. Okay, maybe, hmm, I'm not so sure about that one, right? And so that may be a good article to write, rare guppy breeds. I would consider the competition for this. Is it low? Well, I don't know, There, there is one blog post. So this one kind of hedges between low and medium. And that's something I wanna make sure to point out for you is we've really designed this process that if you miscategorize one way or the other one spot, it's okay. That's why we're working off basic large buckets instead of trying to find an exact number because you're never gonna find an exact number. It's hard enough to just classify it in general buckets. And so you can be reasonably accurate here. The last point I wanna make is this is adding a lot of intelligence that's gonna save you a ton of time 
in the search analysis process, but by no means should you take this as gospel. For example, this, uh, this blog post, why are horses measured in hand? So I see medium competition, it's 5,000 to 10,000 search volume, so it's a really good opportunity for us. Do I really need to spend four hours writing that article, making it a staple post? It's very likely I could do just as good of a job making this a response post in two hours. It's a very simple topic. And that's what this won't know, is just where it's a simple topic, you can just do something easy. This is really determining post type and time to write, and if you should write it based on some external factors. And so there are times that you just need to overwrite this thing and say, no, this is gonna be a response post and I'm gonna take two hours writing it. And that's okay too. Feel free, you should take over, use your brain and do some things on here where uh, it just needs it. The last thing that I wanna point out here is query grouping. A lot of times as you're doing this search analysis, you're going to see things that in and of themselves are too small. For example, can horses eat M&Ms? I mean, are we gonna write, can horses eat Twix? Can horses eat Milky Way? Can horses eat a sucker? It's ridiculous, right? I probably am going to write an article, list of what candies horses can safely eat. And then I'm gonna treat them all together. I'm gonna take a bunch of queries and group them together. And so sometimes I might say, well, maybe this is under one, but don't throw this away. Maybe I want to find, say, yeah, you know, this is too small, but I could group it with a few other things and write a query group post that could actually be a powerhouse. Same thing with the ones that are too big where it says don't write, it says, say, wait a minute, but could I take an aspect of it if there's enough search volume? So that's competition. I hope you recognize uh, how cool this is. We've seen so many people in our community making some major errors in this search analysis process. And this is gonna remove a lot of the responsibility so that you'll know you're doing it right because it's figuring out a lot of the things for you. Me and Ricky have spent hours and hours going back and forth over video chat, um, looking at these and like, well, should that one be medium priority or high priority and how to group all these? And I, I feel confident that we have it right for you now.